Okay. The floor is yours, David. Okay. Um, my um, cursor is not working so on this, so I just want to cut out for a minute, kick that. Anyway, let, let me start before I um, load this uh, presentation completely. Um, before we begin, I want to thank everybody for joining this first segment of Eyes Wide Open, Learning to Look in Order to See. Now, before we begin, I want to thank the Friends of the Westport Center for Senior Activities, Holly Betts, Sue Fister, and of course, Jason Wilson, for inviting me to share my visual experiences and hopefully provide you with some visually stimulating images that will make you smile, especially during these COVID pandemic times. The first here is a segment of five sessions to come and we'll introduce you to some tasteful visual humor and what I hope will be an eye-opening experience related to food and beverage images. So I also hope you'll find this easy to digest. I encourage you to take time to look around and sometimes you'll encounter the unexpected. So be prepared to smile. Here we go. Okay. What is visually insight may give you insight to discover a world of visual interest. So what you're going to see is what caught my eye and why. You can get some eye-opening experiences and more out of life by paying attention to what's around you. Become visually aware. You might experience things you haven't seen before. I always like to discover the unexpected. So keep your eyes wide open and become a focused pupil. However, this is not an academic lesson. As an artist and photographer, this is a personal visual record of my experiences to share with you. So enjoy tasteful visual humor. Now you're gonna find this easy to swallow. Yeah, it'll be easy to digest. I think it'll be easy to remember and easy to regurgitate in order to share what you've seen. Now, how many of you would know what this would be? I saw it at first, I didn't know. Well, it's a mouthful, but it's a telephone that I discovered in Yangon, Myanmar, formerly Burma. And here, gobbling up customers is the restored amusement park, Luna Park in Sydney, Australia. Look how small the people are. They'd be easy to digest. And here is the vampire granddaughter, quite a mouthful, on Halloween about 12 years ago. She's now in college. And this I've entitled Face Food. Now this was a political mural in Santiago, Chile. I don't know who the politicians were there, but I thought this was a highly unusual experience. And this is a mouthful. Um, I might entitle this Strawberry Face, if any of you are familiar with the former Broadway show for children. This was my granddaughter when she was about four. And my grandson, who's now in high school, could never get enough ice cream. So when we were on Martha's Vineyard during the summers, he would always go to the same ice cream parlor. 
Then I told them, get down on your hands and knees and take a bite out of that hot dog, which he did. Now, would you hire this catering firm for one of your social gatherings? Who knows when they would deliver the food or if in fact they would. I saw this on a lamppost in Sydney, Australia a few years ago. Now, this is the chef and he said it will be done in just a minute, just a minute. And so he told me the truth. Out he came. Again, my grandson when he was a little boy and he decided to serve this to his family. So in return, I said, I'll bake a pancake for your stuffed animal. Now, this I've entitled The Taster. And at first, I thought this little boy in Myanmar was tasting the chili peppers. And then I noticed he was holding a cup of sherbet in his hand. So he was having a cool experience. Now also in Myanmar, which you cannot comfortably go to today because of the political military problem, this is a child monk. And the tradition is that parents give their child to a monastery, a Buddhist monastery, for a minimum of two weeks. And if they want to stay, they're welcome to. I also discovered that monks in uh, Myanmar carry rice bowls every morning to collect rice from neighbors. Those are the neighbors donations to the Buddhist monastery. Now here are three more with their rice bowls. They're standing on the top of Mandalay Hill, a wonderful lookout over the area. Now, this is exotic food. I don't think there are any restaurants in Westport that would be interested in selling these. For instance, these happen to be barbecued tarantulas, well-flavored in Cambodia. And the vendor was displaying the fresh tarantulas that went into his cooking. And one of the uh, physicians traveling with me decided he was going to taste one. And he did. He actually ate the whole thing. My wife took a bite out of one of the legs, chewed it briefly and said, I can't swallow it, but it tastes like fried onion rings. Here is the tarantula, the size of your hand, big. Now, these are roasted eggs in Cambodia, very popular. However, they're a bit different than the way we eat eggs. These are allowed to mature so that inside is the embryo. And so they eat the embryo after roasting. Now these are salted and dried snakefish. They're in Cambodia and used as flavoring in different foods. But these are a little closer to home if you wanted. These are cicadas. And as you know, they were all over the place in New Jersey this last spring. Here they're barbecued in Cambodia, as are these little baby frogs with stuffed tummies. 
Well, this dog had had enough and he decided to leave the platters for all of you. Now this has nothing to do with food or beverage, but I found it a wonderful uh, introduction to the next image. I actually saw this, please mind your head, on a low ceiling in Tasmania, the South Island state of Australia. But it's a great introduction to this. A banana vendor, yes, in Myanmar, in the area known as Bagan, she was hawking these bananas. I'm not sure you could call Myanmar a banana republic though. In Myanmar, vendors love to carry their products on their head. They're very well balanced. Now you'll notice the child and the mother vendor have a cosmetic on their face. This is known as Tanaka. Tanaka is made from a ground wood from a branch in a local tree mixed with water. And it's used not only as a cosmetic, but as a sun shield to protect the skin. Now here you, you wanna protect your, your linens and uh, in a hotel, you're not allowed these fruits. They're prohibited. Durians and mangosteens. Durians have a terrible odor to them but locally they seem to be in, uh, let's say in demand periodically in Myanmar. Mangosteens, however, are, they, they smell fine. And I tried one, they're very sweet, but I had an allergic reaction and decided not to eat any more. Heads up, these are coconut pirates in Key West, Florida. Now you're gonna need some books for cooks if you're going to prepare goat and kangaroo for your guests. And here in Melbourne, Australia, in an open air market, a vendor put a plastic snake on his uh, peas to prevent people from immediately taking them. But here in Connecticut, you don't need to steal any vegetables. You can go out in spring and munch on, yeah, you can munch on these, skunk cabbage. And I learned that the Boy Scouts are told if you get lost in the forest, you can eat skunk cabbage. It is not poisonous and it might preserve you. However, I would not eat this, although I saw it in many uh, markets in Australia. Sea cucumber. I didn't know what it was, so I did a little research. It's a bottom dweller, and it lives on the droppings from all the other sea creatures. So I'm not sure I could swallow that in confidence. However, you might prefer ox kidney, lamb heart, or lamb kidneys. No, I know. You'd prefer the turkey gizzards. They're only $2.99 a pound. It's a deal. Or Japanese giant clams. The shells are small, but the bodies are large. Here's looking at you, kid. These are squid eyes in Tokyo, Japan, along with his cousins, uncles, and other relatives. I'd prefer these over this slimy octopus, also in Japan. And these are different type of octopus or octopi. How does that grab you? Don't buy it, you'll be a sucker. These are spiny sea urchins in Japan. 
They are a popular um, product. I'm not sure how they get to the heart of it. This kind of would stick in my throat. Now this is a grouper, a delicious fish, but I don't know what he is gobbling up here. Maybe the remains of a hook. Here are some sardines. Take your pick. I think they're all going to taste about the same. They all look the same. Or maybe you would prefer the chicken feet. Very fresh, perfect condition. But you can go to Mystic, Connecticut, to the historic seaport and get salt dried cod out in the summer sun baking. Now, when I saw these from a distance in an open air market in Melbourne, Australia, I thought they were carrots and parsnips. I wasn't sure. When I got closer, I found out they're sausages of different types. Now this is the largest lobster I have ever encountered on the roof of a fishing distribution center in Tasmania. Now these are the best oysters ever. They're so good you could die for them because they come from Coffin Bay. They're a product of Australia, but notice they crossed off the word fresh. So I had to remind myself, it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin they carry you off in. Now, this is a warning. You are about to enter Devil's Kitchen in Oregon. And here in Hamilton, New Jersey, at Grounds for Sculpture, are sculptures of devils cooking up all kinds of people and animals. This is by the famed sculptor Seward Johnson, one of the heirs to the, the Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceutical Company. And here is the pot that boils over. It's to die for, just look what's in it. Would you like to enter Nando's for some flame grilled chicken? That's not a very welcoming umbrella. Now, I don't know how many of you know what coprolites are, but they're petrified dinosaur droppings that I encountered displayed on a plate to look like food in an old mining museum in Western Tasmania. I think you'd break your teeth on these since they're fossilized. Now, this caught my eye as I was dining in a Cambodian restaurant. And along the side of the dining room were different signs. And they apparently were seasonings for the foods that were served. I asked myself, what would mat dong be? Is this something like they scraped off the mat? No, it's herbs in Cambodian language. So, We'll take a break and go to Reykjavik, Iceland. Here you can try their shark. My wife did put the bite on her. And here's the shark being cured, hanging outdoors. It does not smell very nice. Let's put it that way. He was lapping it up but he was in Sicily, Italy. Now, I don't know how many of you know what this little boy is holding. 
but it was very popular at an open air market. So I investigated. It's called Twisto. Twistos are potatoes that are skewered and opened up and deep fried like our French fried potatoes. And they are delicious. Now, this is a different experience. This is the entryway to a beehive um, farm. And they were selling honey. So they were dripping honey down the side of their entryway. Well, my brother was traveling with me and he said, I'm going to see if that's real. So he stuck his foot in it and I said, be careful. The ants might get you. They had painted ants on the walkway. And then there's this. This is one of a dozen remarkable rocks on Kangaroo Island off the south coast of Australia, a national park with unusual wildlife and rock formations. This looked like an eagle's beak to me, and I thought it was gonna gobble up these two stones on the left. So I said to my wife, Judy, photograph me quickly before I get gobbled up. That's the size of that rock. But if you're in Sydney, Australia with your pet, they have a pet deli for you and your pet. And if you go to Guatemala, to Antigua, Guatemala, there's a restaurant that serves your dog also while you're dining inside. But you don't have to leave the United States. You can go up to Crater Lake Lodge in Oregon, where during the WPA programs in the 1930s, these lodges were opened and gave work to artists. And this squirrel lamp is still in use today. And this is what the squirrel did to my, yeah, ate my jack-o'-lantern at Halloween. Now in Santiago, Chile, I encountered this little um, cafe called Tippy Tap, and I thought it was really cute. And next door, the Lost Monkeys Cafe and Bar. But my favorite of all, outside a bar in Valparaiso, Chile, beer as cold as your ex-girlfriend's heart. Will you drink to that? Maybe he will. He said to the uh, waitress, I'll have what she's having. So what was she having? Chicha beer, corn beer in Peru. And so was she. I don't think this was her first uh, mug. She had a lot of it and she was smiling all day in Peru. I guess you'd prefer mother's milk, Keegan's ale in Kingston, New York. Some people say that mother's milk ale sucks. Or my favorite, Rusty Water Brewery. When I saw this on a small island off Melbourne in Australia, I questioned whether I'd want to drink water made from rusty water in a brewery. Some people said it was worth its metal, but I questioned that. So I decided to go to the Genoa bar out in Nevada. It turned out to be the oldest thirst parlor since 1853. And it's still there. However, if there are any of our Wise Men's Camera Club members, they would have seen this at the Bronx Zoo during our trip a few years ago. Zoo Brews, a vendor had it posted 
And I took a second look and I said, wait a minute, that flask of beer has a rabbit on top. What is the rabbit dropping into the beer? I'm not sure I want to drink that. I think I'll go for Cascade ginger beer. It has a real bite to it. And the mascot, yeah, the mascot is a Tasmanian devil in Tasmania, the South Island off the uh, south coast of Australia. Now, they have the strongest jaws in the animal kingdom. And that ginger beer had a real bite to it. It was not sweet. It was tangy. I know you'd much prefer to go back to Myanmar and have some scorpion flavored liqueur. Yeah, they put the whole scorpion in. So you get the full flavor. Now I was very impressed with this well-balanced um, waitress, especially after drinking so many bottles. She was very well balanced. And so was she. At the Kangaroo Island Spirit Company, known as KISS, this woman was giving free samples of KISS gin, which was delicious. And what was so interesting is she was six foot three inches tall. I mean, inches, I said feet. She was El Bigo, but the sweetest person. So I had a sip of gin. But you could go to Angkor in Cambodia and have yam spirit or black sticky rice spirit. I know you much rather have this. Hypnotique, a French liqueur made with exotic fruit juices and premium vodka with just a touch of cognac. But that was competing with X-rated fusion liqueur. And that's made from ultra premium vodka and blood orange from Sicily. But this is for everyone. It is a healthy, healthy drink. Now this was one of the humorous things that I encountered on a trip a few years ago to Santiago, Chile in South America. This water goddess sculpture was on the side of a cathedral. Now, water goddesses are uh, in, well, let's say they symbolize the need for water in a very dry country, most of which is high desert. And I was photographing this with a telephoto lens across a um, plaza. And I didn't realize the water was being poured on somebody's head. At least that's what it looked like to me. And then I noticed next to it, recycled water, do not drink. Speaking of water, I couldn't figure out what this guy was doing. In Sicily, Italy, I saw this and I couldn't figure out, is the face blowing the water out or sucking the water in? And nobody could tell me. So I know you'd much prefer heaven sent kangaroo island pure rain water. Or maybe, how about this for a brand? Oral, quality drinking water. That sounds safe. And then you have this. This guy was questioning what was in the secret recipe drinking water. H2O or what else? Well, this is Ben Hur brand can. Ben Hur can drink this. 
because these last a long time. These are huge gallons of water for a Buddhist monastery in Mandalay, Myanmar. Now, I don't know how many of you can recognize these fruits, but they're used in lychee drinks. <laughs> Yo, lychee drink in Cambodia. Notice no added preservatives. It was quite good. Or in Central America, Raptor, energy drink. However, in Valparaiso, Chile, they take these bottles and recycle them. This sign says, don't hurt me, help your planet. So recycling Coke bottles as planters makes sense. Now, I have not encountered this, but once wacko summer seasonal drink made with beet juice made in South Burlington, Vermont. Well, clearly she did not get the rise out of Coca-Cola that she anticipated. And she started to drink Revive, but it didn't work. Anyway, she'll wake up in time. So I suggested she go to the cafe Ole Way. Now, associated with cafe is Moana Coffee. It's been hiding upstairs in Darwin, Australia since 2013. And in a coffee shop in Bend, um, Oregon, this sign was posted. Unattended children will be given espresso and a free kitten. But this is my favorite. Also in that cafe in Oregon, drink coffee, do stupid things faster with more energy. I think this should be posted in the Westport Senior Center and Maybe it'll stimulate everybody. Now, in a botanical garden, I discovered wild coffee has a Latinate term, psychotria nervosa, which explains why if you drink too much coffee, you get a little shaky and nervous. If you want more coffee, Go to the Duong D Hill Tribe Coffee Company in, yeah, Darwin, North Australia. They'll put opium into your coffee for a slight fee. Now, I didn't want to buy the coffee here. It just had this fishy sound to me. Green Salmon Coffee Company? I don't know why they decided on that name. And this has been around too long. It's probably stale, but it's still in Singapore. So I'd recommend my coffee. I'll give you a free espresso. Now, I don't know how many of you know about insomnia coffee, uh, cookies, sorry. These cookies are sold in cities and towns where there are universities. So in New Haven on uh, Chapel Street near Yale, I found this baked right late night. We deliver till 3 a.m. You can order online and have it delivered right to your door or probably into your dormitory room. Or maybe you would like a smile on your face. I thought this was a cute little fast food store in Melbourne, Australia called Pie Face. They made little, little pies that were round and you could uh, take them as snacks. 
but nowhere near as good as pie chicks pies on Martha's Vineyard. Fresh fruit and the best you could ever want. You could get dessert and ice cream at Sir Mustache Cafe in Australia or go to Japan and there they advertise outside the restaurants with models of promotional items. You could play with your food. Or you can pig out on some chocolate. Yes, in Guatemala. Now, up at the Culinary Institute, you can have a dessert with, yeah, the image of the chef. It's very tasteful. And the sconces on the wall of the restaurant give tribute to the chefs. It was quite an illuminating experience. Or go to Grand Central at Easter time and snack out on some little bunny rabbits. But one of my favorites is the snazzy pig barbecue joint in Roswell, New Mexico. Or you could go to Peru where you see guinea pigs on a dirt floor gobbling up food droppings. Unfortunately, an hour later, I went to a home hosted lunch and was fed guinea pig. All the people sitting around the table who were not normally familiar with Peruvian food turned green. Well, here, I was fit to be tied to see this. Roasted lambs barbecued in the Torres del Paine region of Chile, South America, where you could also get brochetas, the llama. Yes, these are made from llamas. I'm not sure $3,000 was the actual price. This is what they look like. And they were flavorful, but very tough. So go to the Dirty Burger and Ribs joint in Reykjavik, Iceland. Isn't that a welcoming sign? And so appropriate for the name, Dirty Burger and Ribs. Well, if you want a big hamburger, a la gar hamburguesa gigante. Yeah, in Antigua, Guatemala. My favorite of all is this fast food restaurant in Melbourne, Australia, Lord of the Fries. I wasn't so thrilled about going to this restaurant, Le Scargot restaurant in Guatemala. She didn't look too welcoming. And I thought she was going to stick me with her, her fork. And then I was confused in Tokyo at Denny's because I didn't recognize any of the foods. Then there's Dipper Dan since 1972 up on the Oregon coast. And I think he's looking through the window at me as I faced the restaurant door. Now this kind of amused me. In Tokyo and throughout Japan, they have these vending machines for soda and beverages. And in the lower left-hand corner, I noticed something familiar. Well, it looks like Tommy Lee Jones is the key promoter of Boss brand soda in Japan. I think he's daring you to buy it. Would you like to buy a coffee cup? 
Nimi brand coffee cups are sold here. And they also create balconies for the inhabitants of the company. Now here you could have a little something different. Have a trilobite in Disney World. Yes, they are <laughs> petrified. Or the Dancing Crab restaurant in Oregon. And on Martha's Vineyard, blissed out every Thursday at the farmer's market, you get healthy food to go at blissed out. But this is the foremost ice cream I have ever seen. It's for most people, and a lot of people bought it in Santiago, Chile. Now, here is a, an exciting, excited pizza cooker in Sicily. He was so excited about his food that he was demonstrating all the types that he made. Now, I decided not to eat the sandwich here. I was going by and I said, well, why would I eat something if they're sorry that they made it? What a name for a restaurant, sorry. However, this bear seemed to enjoy it. He ate it at the Happy Walk in Tokyo. How about the Yak and Yeti restaurant? Anandandapur. Or here's a place I wouldn't want to eat. I mean, really. The bistro new didn't look new to me. And there's a stop sign like do not enter. So I decided to pass it by. This looks like a nice luncheon experience. Again, the sculptor Seward Johnson's lifelike impressionist images, one of many. He's full size and cast in metal and then hand painted in an environment that has many sculptures. Now, read this, it'll get your attention. This is a licensed area meaning no bring your own drinks or food. This was in a very remote area of Australia called the Kakadu in northeastern uh, Australia, managed by Aboriginal population. Now, I didn't know Koreans had pizza houses, but apparently they do. And under my chair, as I was getting up from lunch at Centro in Greenwich, I thought, hey, there's a slice of pizza under my chair. But it was actually, <laughs> it was part of the floor tiling. This is a nice place to eat, nice restaurant. How about this? Coffee shop open every damn day. These are not edible. They are a display in the window of a restaurant in Tokyo, Japan, which is typical where they put food in the window to seduce you by its, its delicious appetite appeal. But it's plastic. So go to the yogurt the Yogurteria and the Gelateria in Sicily, Italy. He loves it and she is lapping it up. I know you'd love this bacon candy and you can have it from any area of the pig before you pig out on it. Or you could have sizzling bacon candy that explodes in your mouth according to the packaging or maybe Mr. Bacon's bacon-flavored toothpaste. It says it makes your breath 
bacon fresh. And it's an accoutrement, so the package says. Now, in Australia, Vegemite is a very popular uh, food. It is a concentrated yeast extract, high in protein and low in fat. It was developed during World War II for soldiers going afield. Um, they could live on this, get enough protein and survive. Well, it's become so popular. If you go to a restaurant and have breakfast, instead of little patches, little packages of jams and jellies like we get in our uh, <clears throat> diners, you get Vegemite packets. And they spread this on toast and eat it with their scrambled eggs. And it is so popular as a brand. Look in the lower left-hand corner here. This is a child's clothing store. They put the brand on children's clothing. Happy little Vegemite. Up in Mystic, Connecticut, once a year, you can go, whoops, you can go to the Holy Smoke Cigar Dinner. Only once a year, though. However, if you go back to Myanmar, they take fresh tobacco and roll it, hand roll it into cigars or cheroots, as they call them. They put a new spin on it, and here it is, fresh as can be. However, you won't find it here in the Cloud Nine smoke shop. Because quite frankly, in my opinion, you got to have your head in the clouds to smoke today with what we knew, what we know it does to your health. But if you go up to <laughs> go up uh, into Nevada, you can go to Reno and the Seaweed West Farm offers cannabis. And you can do a pre-roll starting at $2 a gram. And then you can get on the cannabis in Perkins Cove, Oregon. And have a real trip. However, I encountered coca leaves in San Pedro, Chile, in the Atacama Desert at an open air market where people chew the coca leaves to reduce um, the uh, fatigue from heights because these deserts are very high, uh, over 10,000 feet. Now, I wish I could get a hands raising on this. How many people know what this woman is doing and where she's doing it. Well, she's smoking under a Chinese cigar tree, which I thought was an appropriate place to smoke in Sydney, Australia. But I told her, you're not the only one smoking these days. And in Northern Myanmar, this woman was smoking too. And I said, you know, that's not good for your health. So butt out. And we will too, as we are waved goodbye by the Pope and the Queen in Reykjavik, Iceland. And in Cambodia, he's saying goodbye to us too and they're waving goodbye, so it's time to exit. And as I do, I say to you, keep your eyes wide open, remember to look in order to see, you may discover something new. And that concludes our session. I'm open for a talk, questions, whatever. 
So I'm going to ask Jason, should we go back to a full screen? So yeah, will, you can stop share. That's fine. I will stop sharing. If I can get my cursor here. Great. Perfect, David. Full screen. That was amazing. Great job. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, if you want to raise your hand and where and you take yourself. these pictures, it's quite amazing that you have this all documented. Well, what I've done, Sal, is I've taken my images and put them into categories as well as uh, in the, um, uh, the, let's say, if I'm going to uh, Tasmania, I will have um, a chronological, um, you know, uh, file on the images taken there. But I will then take images and put them into different categories, like we do with the um, uh, Wiseman's Photography Club. Um, and so I find things that are humorous, I'll put them in my humor file. If I find food that looks delicious, I'll put it into the food file. And if I find animals that are interesting, they go into the wildlife file. And for those of you who will continue with the sessions that I'm going to do, um, the, uh, the next one will deal with land, sky, and water, as well as uh, people. And those are different categories that I also use. And in the third section of this series, um, I have botanicals and um, uh, I guess wildlife and other things that fit into those categories. In this series, uh, Dave, in this series of photographs, what is the overall period of time that you took these pictures from how long ago to the 6,432 years. <laughs> I guess I think, you don't know. You didn't keep track of that. Well, um, I think I could uh, say that they probably go back mm, 15 years. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking of my grandchildren that showed up in the first images shown, and they're now 15 and 18 years old. So they were only four, five years old at the time. And uh, I think those I reached back to get because I found them appropriate for food and, and beverage. The others won't go back that far, maybe to 2006. Hmm. Uh, yes, John sir. has a quit. Hold up, I gotta unmute John. John, can you ask your wife to unmute you? Don runs our current events class for a year and a half, and he doesn't know how to unmute. <laughs> uh, Dorothy seems to have created. There we go. Okay, John, go ahead, John. Can you hear me now? Yes, John. Yes. I have two bottles. I thought the presentation was super. I have two <laughs> bottles of beer that I treasure. One I got in Utah, and it's Polygamy Porter. And the back of the bottle, it says, <laughs> Bring home a few bottles for your wives. <laughs> the other one, the uh, label has a, uh, a photograph of a woman, you know, from her uh, hips up with a dog attached to her leg. And the name of the beer is Old Leg Humper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll take, I'll take a picture of those two and send them to you. Can't wait, John. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got a leg up on that one. <laughs> okay, so the presentation for next week will be at the same time. I'll probably use the same Zoom link um, and we'll send that out probably Wednesday and I'll send a reminder out Friday morning. So, Great. Uh, any last questions? Are we good? I just wanted to say thank you, David. I know for me personally, I needed a lot of these chuckles. So I'm sure other folks enjoyed laughing. So thank you for sharing Amen that. Amen to that. Well, yeah. Sue, you know, that reminds me, maybe maybe I should get a package if they still make them. Do you, I'm, I'm sure some of you remember chuckles. Yes. 
You remember <laughs> chuckles? I don't know if they make them anymore, but they'd be perfect for this. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank so you David. It's a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you next Bye, week. Bye, everybody. Stay well. Thank you, David. David.